thank you. Uh, I would like first to glad the the conference for giving me the opportunity of giving this talk. Um, I am from University for Federal University of Minas Gerais. Uh, here we have a picture of the sightseeing of the roof of our building. Um, here is our group meeting, our group research, the Enlight Entanglement and Quantum Inform and, and Quantum Optical Theory. Uh, this work was made with uh, these two collaborators. Alberto de Paulo is another student, PhD student from my university, and Rafael Drummond, which is in this conference with, and is my advisor. Um, uh, as the title says, I will talk about the um, Ising model. Here I'm considering uh, the Ising model given by this Hamiltonian, which I have interaction between, I have a let, and I have interaction between first neighbors of these let. And I'm considering only transverse, transverse external magnetic fields. Uh, it's more standard to consider only in the x direction, but I can also consider in the y direction these external magnetic fields. Uh, so they still are transverse uh, comparing with the interactions, but they do not need to be all in the same direction. And I will consider as the first part of the talk, let's like, like this, which I have two sides, uh, which they do just have one site as their in their intersection, and they do not have their they interact only indirect the other sites just interact the other the sites of X interact with sites of Y only by this intersection of the site which I am calling L. Um, so what is the shielding property? Um, it is for systems described by the transverse Ising model, which is in the, the Gibbs state given by this formula, where that is the inverse of temperature. And I will consider the external magnetic field nu in that side of the middle, the intersection between the, the two sides. There is no magnetic field there. So we have shown that the reduced state of one side has no dependence on the parameters of the other side. That is, the Ex the reduced state of this set here has no dependence on the interactions between sites of X, neither the magnetic field is applied here. It is surprising because we, you, can, you could have a really strong interaction, as big as you want, and this, the, this reduced state cannot detect this. Um, I will show a sketch of the proof because it's short, it's easy, and it's beautiful. Uh, for showing this sketch, I will consider um, I will consider a um, simpler, uh, simpler, a particular case where I have just the I just have the magnet ma the magnetic fields in the x direction, and I am will consider the that the lets that my lets is our chan. Here I am labeling the 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 number of each site, and I will make we will choose some site to make this external magnetic field new. Um, so I wish to show that this side has no dependence on here or on this other side, and Hamiltonian with two terms. H line is the Hamiltonian, the part of the Hamiltonian, the terms of this side of the left side of the chain, and H two lines, the the parameters of the terms of the this other side. Um, so I have that the here I'm considering the Gibbs states without normalization. I will not I will not care with with normalizations now. With it will be done at the end. Uh, so, exponential of the Hamiltonian, I can multiply these two terms since these two terms will commute. I'm doing the, I will not have 
sigma x here. So these two sides will commute. Um, to calculate the partial trace here, the reduced state here, I have to calculate the partial trace of, of my state. Um, so, uh, using this separation here, I can show that this, the partial trace, I have just to calculate the partial trace of each line. Uh, here, I'm hiding some details of this calculation, not directed like this. So, with what I will show is that this term here is proportional to the identity operator. So, it's being proportional to the identity operator. I will perform normalizations, and then I will have just on this term here at the for the describing my partial my my partial state my the reduced state. And here I wrote what I just tell. Um, so for to making that, so I will now I will try to show that this quantity here is proportional to the identity operator. To make that, I will use the series expansion of the exponential. So, to show that this quantity is proportional to the identity, I just have to show that it every power of h line, the partial trace of the powers of h line, is proportional to the identity operator. Uh, remember that h line is the sum of is is the sum of the, the sites 1 to L, the interactions between the first the sites of the left side of the chain. Um, to explain uh, the technique that I used to show this, I will use, I will use a particular case where I will set the, the external magnetic field no at the third site. So I have to calculate the partial trace only on sites one and two. And um, I will spec specify more. I will set n equal three, just to show the idea. Um, then each, each line elevated by three, it's, it's this expression for this, this tr these three sites, and I have to calculate the partial trace of space of site one and two. Um, performing this calculation here, I would get this big formula that can be seen that as the sum of two terms. One, the first term there, the, the first terms, I have the operator in the third site equal identity, and this last one, this, this last one, I will have the operator of the third side equal three. I have to show that these terms here, the partial trace, will be equal zero. Here will be another constant. After normalization, this constant will disappear. But here, in this example, we could make direct calculations and show that this is zero. I will just I would just I would choose this term here to show the method. This term, this last one, which I have chosen, is the multiplication of this term, this term, and after this other term. I will make this product like this. Here is my chain, and you will associate like a game board to this chain. For the first to for the sides of the left, one and two, I will associate two squares. And that, that side where I make the magnetic field zero, I will associate one line. Each of one of these corners will represent one operator, sigma z, sigma y, sigma x, and identity. And here, just sigma z and identity. Um, I will write here that operators that I want to make the the they are sigma z inside one times sigma x inside two times 
sigma z inside 2, sigma z inside 3. So here I'm representing the first, the, the first terms. They are sigma 1, sigma 1, and identity. So it's like I'm putting white pieces in this game board. Now I will multiply by sigma x. Then multiplying by sigma x, it is in the side 2. So just the second piece will move. It will move down here. It will be proportional to sigma y. Now I will perform the third term. I will multiply the third term. And it, this piece here will move to the right, and this other piece will move to the left, performing my, my multiplication. Note that always that I multiply some, some piece by sigma z, it will go to the, it will change their side. It will move to the left or to the right. Do not matter its position. When I multiply by sigma x, it will just change its height. Note that I always, sigma z and sigma, always sigma z in my calculation here, in my h line 3, appears just with pairs. They do not appear alone. So if I start with an even number of pieces at the, the left, here I have two pieces at the left. I perform the calculation. At the end, I have still an even number of pieces at the left. Since I just moved the, the, the side of the piece uh, in couples, I will always have an even number of sides of the at the left. Here, we can see that when, when my piece is of the third side is occupying sigma 3, I have at least one piece in the squares occupying some position in the left. The only A for, the, for my partial trace do not be zero is that the piece would be identity, identity, and sigma three. But I do not have this as because of this argument. So always that my piece is here, the trace will be zero. So uh, the trace has to be the identity operator, a constant times identity operator. I could have this, the configuration, identity, identity, and identity. It could happen dependent of the term. But identity, identity, sigma 3, it's forbidden. Um, this, is, this argument can be quite generate, quite it can, be, can be done for this let's also, which I have only one side here. I just would take associate another game board for the slats um, and use the same ergometer. Always that I have this piece here, one of the pieces of this one of this square at least has to be have a piece at the left. Um, so with this argument we prove that the reduced state here has no dependence on the parameters of this other side. Um, as the ground, the Gibbs state, it goes to, it tends to the ground state when the temperature is made, is goes to zero, when I make beta tends to infinity. So this property also works for ground states. Um, this property is a property of the transverse Ising model. If I have here, I have a counter, a counter example that I, I have a Hamiltonian which has a field per, long, per, um, longitudinal, longitudinal field. It is in the same direction of the interactions. And we can show that the reduced state, uh, here I have a, a chain also, and I apply a magnetic field at the first site. We can show that the reduced state of the last site is dependent of the, this magnetic field. So this property is special of the transverse Ising model. Um, it, one way of understanding better this property 
is using the duality of the transverse Ising model. Here we write, we write the operators, we define another operators using my the Pauli operators. And we can rewrite the Hamiltonian of the Ising model in this way such that J will perform the the interactions will become the magnetic fields in this dual site and H will be now the new interactions. That is, I am relating a dual a dual let's a dual a dual chain where when I apply the magnetic field here equals zero, it's the same as cutting off the interaction between two sides of this dual chain. So it's more visual to understand that this side has no dependence on this other side. Um, we our proof work only when we have one side in the intersection between two sides. But we could ask what it would happen if we have more sides in the interaction. Here is a picture where, uh, where ask x one side of the the let's is this black set, it's black set and the with the red one, and y would be the red with the blue. If I made the external magnetic field here equal zero in this red set, this set here would feel the, if I change the parameters here, uh, the answer is no, and we can show this, this with this with the simple example, where here it's my interface, here is one set, and here's the other one. Here, two, three, and four would be the Y set, and one, two, and three would be the X set. Uh, so making this here external magnetic field new, we can show that um, the reduced state here on site four is test dependence on the magnetic field applied on site one. Uh, here is the some calculations for different values of beta. Here I am varying the magnetic field on site one, and here I'm observing the the, mag the magnetization on site four. Um, it is surprising because if you have one let's, uh, I forgot to say that the let's of the theorem could be of any dimension and there is just that hypothesis of one site in the intersection but that could be any dimension and that there could be any let's, the two sides. But if you put one more site, the property does not work more. We don't understand why, why this work, why, why this, why this happened. Um, so, but when beta tends to infinite, the temperature goes to zero, we can show that the reduced state still has no dependence of, of the other side. Um, so in this example, at least, the shielding property still works for ground states. Um, and now we ask, does shielding property work for ground states of other lights? Uh, we have done some numerical calculations with other examples. Here, which I show a light where we have made in these three sites the external magnetic field null. Here, we have changed the parameters and we have looked for the magnetization in the site. And here we can see that in the blue sites, the magnet, the we change the parameters, but here it is still the same. Uh, here is another example, but very similar to the other. But we just change the, the this. It's the same lets, but we change the sets, the definition of the sets, and the conclusions are the same. Uh, this this set here cannot feel modifications on parameters here. Um, so, as a summary of the first part, when I have a let like this, 
just with this condition. We have that the shielding property works for Gibbs state and ground states, since comes from the theorem. When I have a more general lattice, we already know that Gibbs state does not work, but about grounding state, we do not know yet. Um, another approach for this, this lattice here is to ask about dynamics. Now, I am dealing with any Hamiltonian such that it is a sum of two terms, a term of side which is non-trivial only inside side X, only inside set X, that is, it is a Hamiltonian non-trivial only inside this part, and this is a non-trivial outside in the blue part and red part, the set Y. And we ask that these both Hamiltonians, these both terms to commute. Note that the Ising model, when I make the magnetic field new here, it does satisfy this this hypothesis here. So uh, it is a, the Ising model we are dealing with the first part is a particular case of these other models here. Um, I can show that I will take an observable outside sex X. It is only, it, it's an observable of the blue sites. Okay? And I will ask about its dynamics. Uh, here I'm using born hull to calculate this dynamics and using the evolution of the state hull. I can use the cyclic property of the trace. I take this term here. It commutes with observable O because they belong to different subsets. And then I have this answer here. So the observable, the, the, val the mean values of observable and any observable of outside set X is independent of the Hamiltonian 8X, satisfying this, that previous hypothesis. Um, some consequence is that if I have two systems with different Hamiltonians, they are equal in the, in the set Y, but different, these terms are different, and they have the same initial state, they will have the observable will follow the same dynamics. But if the initial state is different, I could have that these observables still do not follow the same dynamics. The, an example of this statement here is that previous example I have said of the longitudinal IZ model, which one set fills the magnetic field on one on the other side. Um, but when I have the transverse size model and the initial state is the Gibbs state, the, ini the, trans the initial states could be different. And it will be because if these Hamiltonians are different, the Gibbs states are an analytical function of these Hamiltonians and uh, they will be different. But we will still have that the observables will follow the same dynamics, since we have proven that the reduced states of, of, of the site that set Y are equal. Um, as an illustration of, of, this, of this consequence, we have made a simulation where we have uh, a chain with which is described by the Ising model. And I make the external magnetic field here in this site no. And then we calculated the ground state. And at the moment, the, the initial inst moment, we change the magnetic field at the first side. Then we can see the dynamics falling here. It quite reflects here, like it works as a bar here. Uh, remember that the, these sites here could have interactions really strong and perturbations here do not follow, do not come here. It, sites here we would not never know that 
that perturbation here was done. Uh, we can relate to this picture with um, effective light cons. Uh, as here, I have an uh, illustration of an uh, effective light, light con, which is already well known in literature that systems which have short range interaction has a finite velocity of propagation for local quench. So a system far from the local quench would have to wait a finite time to feel the modifications in the system. Since we can, as we can see in the side here, it takes a moment to change its, its values. But we have a stronger condition here that sites here, it's not, not, not have to wait just a finite time. It will never know. It will never, the site, signal here would never reach this part. Um, here, I just uh, wrote the conclusions I just have told. Um, I finish here. Here are my acknowledgments. I thank you for your attention. And I finish with a beautiful winter in Belo Horizonte. <laughs>